100 Days in Hardcore Minecraft as the ultimate farmer on Pam's Harvestcraft. The best mod pack in Minecraft? Yeah, I said it. I'm gonna spend over a year throughout the changing seasons trying to build my farmhouse. Start a huge Harvestcraft farm with over 80 different types of crops and build a greenhouse and animal barn with a few other projects on top of that. Or should I say, under that. All of this so that I can make all of the recipes in Harvestcraft. And by the way, there's over 1,400 recipes. So yeah, let's get started. Hey you, you're finally awake. And speaking of Skyrim, looks like we're starting our playthrough right at the end of a cold winter and the beginning of a rainy spring. Now, I'm no fan of frozen buns, so I'm gonna head away from the mountains and try to find a nice flat area in the dark oak forest. The best forest. Yeah, the best forest. And don't even try to fight me in the comments about that one either. I follow this river all the way down till I find this absolutely perfect spot. Dark oak forest, check. Right on the lakeside, check. Big open area right next to the forest, just big enough for me to park said frozen buns. Big check. I find this fine upstanding turkey and briber with some seeds. I'm hoping she'll keep a good eye on this little spot for me while I go and find some materials. Or maybe I'm just fattening her up for a turkey dinner. Either way, both are good. Oh, and those little hearts popping out over her head reminds me. I want to start this video off by thanking my Patreon supporters. Yeah, I know, I know. If you thank your supporters in the beginning of the video, it'll make people click off, less views, less watch time. I don't care. I love you guys and girls so much for making my videos a reality. I wanted to thank you guys and let you be known right up front. Thank you so much again. Seriously, I love you guys. Oh, but I love you too, Tina. Don't be jealous. You started off today so well. I'm such in positive mood. I don't even think I'm going to kill any of these turkeys. In fact, I'm going to use my very first iron to make shears. That way, I can get these sheepy boys nice and ready for the coming spring. But also, it does help me. Now I won't be staying up all night. The captain needs his beauty sleep. I really, really need my beauty sleep. And just in time, the first sunset in our 100 days is setting. It's a pretty beautiful sunset at that. I couldn't have asked for a better map seed. But without a house, I'm going to have to settle with living in my hobbit hole for now. Still better than my mom's basement. Maybe. The next morning, I shake the pebbles out of my ears and decide my first project will be making a house so that we don't need to sleep in the cold, wet mud anymore. And this means iron tools, of course. And also, the highlight of this video, harvesting wood. A lot of it. Okay, but for real, I am actually starting to make some progress here. I'm putting some storage down in the area where I think I'm going to be putting my farm. After all, this is going to be a full Harvest Craft playthrough. But first, I'm really not loving being out in the rain all day. So let's get started on that farmhouse. Now, I kind of didn't know where I was going to be going with this. I was thinking I'd really like to push my building skills a little bit here. I mean, I still want to stay focused on Pam's Harvest Craft, of course, but this area, it's just such a good building spot. Ah, I'll make up my mind on day three. Now, all of this spring rain is relaxing, sure. Having mobs always spawning and not burning up in the sun, like this creeper right here, not so relaxing. Managed to just barely save my house, I started building up the basic framework, but I'm already getting started on working on adding some dimension to the whole build. In my opinion, it's what really sets a good build apart. But of course, with no sun to burn up all these zombies, I always need to keep an eye out for these stinky, sneaky boys coming from my butt. But with my health bar looking not so great, I do decide to take a little break, and it's time to grab some food. This is probably a good time to talk about the only real drawback of playing Harvestcraft. See, you do have a ton of crops to eat, but they're only going to get you about half a shank of food. It takes a whole lot of time and planning to get the right ingredients growing so that you can just get some basic recipes. This means that the early game of Harvestcraft can be a little bit of struggle when it comes to food. And with all these mobs not dying in the daytime, we're kind of putting ourselves in a bad spot right here. Also, at the same time, Harvestcraft does have these fruit trees. Fresh fruit that keeps growing, no upkeep, no attention needed. Sure, these things definitely don't fill you up quickly, and you do need to keep on looking for them to make sure you have a bunch. But if you can find a forest with just a few of them, 
you don't even need to have the Dark Oak Forest in order to make the early game in Harvest Craft work a little easier. Unfortunately, one of the fruits we have to eat is these pears. Ugh. Fortunately, we do get lucky and find some cherries, which is the best fruit. Oh, well, then avocados if you count those. We definitely want to focus on getting the house built. But since we spent all day getting wood, it's getting dark. I don't need more mobs that don't die in the sun, so we're going to go right to bed. So with all that wood we spent day three harvesting, we can really get started on working on our house. Or at least that's what I was planning on doing. Deja vu. I swear I was in this exact spot fighting this exact zombie yesterday. Okay, all these zombie attacks, with this shortage of food, we really shouldn't waste too much time trying to build this house. So of course, being me, I immediately begin making the framework for the house way too big. I mean, this is going to be one of the biggest homes I've ever made in hardcore. But just when I start to think I'm making a mistake, this little sheep here gives me a pep talk. Good idea, Barbara. This will be a sick dark oak forest house, even if it kills me. I've always said I wanted to make a big dark oak house. This is exactly what I'm going to do. I run out to get some other types of wood, but my ADD gets the best of me, and I do end up down in this ravine. But it's down in the ravine where something pretty cool happens. I didn't even know I had this mod turned on that would do this, but I found this massive crystal cave. I gotta be honest, this looks even better than 1.19 or 1.18. By the way, what is everyone's opinions on those updates? I could probably make a whole video just on my thoughts, but uh, just thinking about that is making me upset. I should be happy. I just found some diamonds down here. And what's even more exciting, I find emeralds. These will be super important when we start getting our market going. Then, back on the surface, we get an unpleasant sucking. What? That's the name of the achievement. It wasn't me this time. Excuse me, please get off. Uh, I have a girlfriend. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, what was I doing before that happened? All right, I'm adding new wood to the house. I'm gonna start digging up all the grass around the house so that I can start to install some floors. But it is getting late, so I'll have to go to bed pretty soon. Then, this zombie reminds me of why I cannot stay out late at night. Day five. Like I said, we're gonna start adding some new wood to the house. I know, I know, I said this was gonna be a dark oak house. But let's be honest, if you only have one type of wood in a house, the build would look kinda goofy. It would. It would look like W-O-O-D. Wait, is that a pun? Anyway, I start setting up all the normal oak floors, and I can tell, Barbara is impressed. I spend all of this day just working on getting this floor plitted. So today is a quick one. But hey, I'm just trying to hurry up so that we can get to that Harvest Craft goodness. Day six. And as I woke up that morning, I had no idea what was coming next. This this goose. This goose. Ooh, I didn't know it at the time, but this, what I'm looking at right here, is the real monster of this playthrough. This is a straight up SCP level threat in disguise. This thing would haunt me. If only I knew back then. But I probably should have been tipped off when I fell down in this ravine, finally clawed my way all the way back up. There she is, honking at me, mocking me. Goose. But that's fine. I'm fine. I finally finished the oak part of the floor. Then I got started on the dark oak walls, which yeah, I know I am using a lot of the same wood here, but from the inside with the oak floors, this actually does end up looking pretty good. You guys probably noted the gap in the floor right here that I didn't fill in. That's because this is actually gonna be our kitchen. I love putting bricks in my kitchen. It just feels right, you know? Barbara's so excited about the house that she's jumping right through my window. Okay, Ba, you know that's trespassing. The Second Amendment clearly says that I can stand my ground and murder you if I get bored. And you probably shouldn't test me in my ADD about getting bored. Oh well, Barbara lives another day. And we head to bed for another night. Day 7, then I look out at my house, and I see that we've made some pretty quick progress. I do need some windows, however, so I'm gonna head out and get some sand. I then get an opportunity here to see that it's still pretty cold, and the mountains that are right next to us are all covered in snow. But also, I see some spruce trees here, which might be the second best wood, next to dark oak that is. I quickly harvest a ton of it, and I finally get the kitchen done, and then turn the spruce into stairs. Then, I start to get myself right up to the second floor. Like I said, I don't want to make this house too big. 
I should probably just make it like an attic and not get too crazy or get too carried away. And I've already made it a huge mansion. Okay, just made the whole second floor. Okay, but that's not too crazy. I can just put a roof on top of this and I just build all the walls for the second floor. So this is going to be at least three stories. Looking back at my house and uh, yeah, I've officially gotten carried away here. As day eight starts, I decide it's time to move my bed out of the hobbit hole, and then I set it down, perfect, right in the soaking wet, just like I like it. Now I need to hurry and try to finish the second floor so that I won't be sleeping in the rain. And yes, that means I've just added another floor to this monster, and I gotta admit, this is getting to be a little bit silly. Now, you've all probably already noticed that there's a big wall here that I haven't done anything to. And I did this on purpose, sort of. I think I know what I want to try to do here. Maybe. No, just trust me. Or don't. Now the second floor has pretty much the skeleton all set out. One of the things I definitely do want to focus on is making the windows nice and big here. The view like this, you gotta take advantage. I then break my legs, but I mean, I totally meant to do that because I wanted to get a good look at my entire central living room after a full day working on it. I'm trying to keep this whole area here nice and open so that it looks spacious. I hope I can pull this off. What I didn't pull off was finishing the bedroom because now the only part of the entire second floor that still has rain pouring in is right on my face. So the next day, I decide it's probably time to finish up my bedroom. I then set up some doors so that I can officially keep all those stinky zombies out. And now the house is totally secure. Oh, except for that massive 10 block wide hole in the wall. Speaking of which, it probably is time to address said massive hole and get a ton of glass panels going. That's right, we're gonna make this whole entire wall one giant glass wall. You're probably thinking, well, don't you wanna make this facing the lake? Trust me, there's gonna be a much better view. You'll see. For now, I am really, really loving how this build is coming together. I just need a bit more sand. But turns out Anakin Skywalker was right. It is coarse, rough, and very, very irritating. As for finding out if he was right about it getting everywhere, I'll just let you guys imagine if that's true or not. In the meantime, I'm headed home to throw all of this sand in our furnaces. Day 11, and after cleaning out all my nooks and crannies, I load up the old furnaces with sand, and now we wait. And by wait, I mean continue to work on our beast of a mansion. Now, I personally don't love using stairs as a roof. I really prefer using slabs. And no, not vertical slabs this time. I set down a double bed, so people will think I have a Minecraft girlfriend. And by day 12, I had gotten a ton of work done on this roof. The house isn't just some big goofy square, so the roof is a little bit of a challenge, which is good, because a big square would be kind of boring and pretty ugly. Finally, as the day was ending, I set up some dark oak trapdoors as railing on the second floor. You know what we haven't had in this video in a long time? The more wood harvesting. Okay, okay, okay. Last time, I swear. But seriously, I did spend this entire day just going out in the forest, harvesting a ton of wood so that I could finish the room. And by that night, it was taking its final shape and looking pretty impressive. And everything was going pretty well. So of course, by day 14, everything fell apart. I started panicking because all of this hard work that had been going into my hardcore play was about to be undone by this dumb rainy spring. Luckily, I got away from that skeleton, just barely, and I find this tree with some fruit so I could, oh, that's a creeper. Now, with half a heart, one skeleton could end my entire playthrough. Classic caps. Whew. But I do manage to forage up just enough food to get my health bar looking a little bit better. And speaking of looking good, this mansion is definitely worth keeping the fight going. Well, except for the part where the roof is basically just kind of floating up there in the sky, we'll have to fix that. So I spend the rest of the day getting the attic all enclosed. And I gotta say, this is looking pretty good. I have a ton of extra space up here for storage. And now I just need to finish all the glass on all the windows, including this big boy. And yeah, the day didn't start great, but by the end of it, everything is coming together pretty well. It's looking pretty solid. The best part is the main part of the house is all done. But on day 15, just as I was starting to feel good, there she was. We meet again, Goose. Ugh, birch sapling. Yeah, you would pick the ugliest wood. 
but I don't have time for you today. I'm finally getting a good look at a fully built up dark oak forest mansion. Now I will admit there's still a ton of details that I'm gonna have to put up, but the main body of it is so good looking. I just can't stop looking at it, but I'm gonna have to because night is coming up on us super fast. This house is so popular, in fact, it turns out that we already have some uninvited guests. Hey buddy, I've actually got the perfect, super special guest room for you in heaven. That skeleton does remind me though that even though this house is looking really good and it's all sealed up, I'm probably still gonna need to make some armor to keep away these rainy day mobs. I guess I thought I was Mr. Beast on this day because I spent it all just running around planting some trees. You guys remember when he did that? When he was trying to save the planet? Now he just plays squid games all day. But hey, I can't really talk too much trash because I immediately start cutting down all the trees as soon as I planted them. So with all this oak, I start making a ton of oak slabs as well as a ton of trapdoors. This was all so I could work on the next big phase of the house, making the outside of the house just as beautiful as the inside. And if I've learned anything from living my entire life in LA, it's that outer beauty is much more important than any inner beauty. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. We don't need to rethink that moral compass at all. Nah. And again, I really focus on trying to add some more dimension and make a cover over each windows with some shutters on the sides. I then have to carefully work outside. Now, luckily, I'm the captain and I'm not super clumsy and I definitely won't fall and break my ankles. Okay, I think we all pretty much saw this coming. And again, wow, okay, you know what? I think I'm done climbing around the house for a little while. I'm gonna start digging the ground again. Yep, digging, much safer. Now I just need to figure out a way to justify this cowardice. Hmm, how to make this look intentional. Ooh, I know, what if I make a, a wraparound patio out front? See, I have a good reason for not working on the second floor. Oh, and of course, I need to set up all these planters down here on the first floor. See? Totally valid reason to stay it down on the ground. Now, I'm not scared. However, eventually, I guess I am going to have to go back upstairs and work on these planters on the second floor. But I think we can all agree that I've definitely learned from my mistakes, and I have gained a great deal of agility and capacity, and I fall off right away. Yeah, of course. Okay. And again. And wow. Okay, a, a third time? This is starting to get a little annoying here. But it is all worth it because at the end of day 18, I have the second floor looking pretty good. All the details and the planners are looking really solid, even here at night. On day 19, I went out to get some spruce for the trap doors and I saw the last of the snow for this year because we're going to be heading into summer very soon. Finished up the last of the planners and more importantly, I finally didn't break my ankles on the way down. Yeah, looking good. Oh. Oh, I forgot there's the top floor. Okay, from way up here, this is, now I'm actually really scared. Just then, the craziest thing happened. Even though I'm way higher up in the air, and even though it's getting dark, I didn't fall once. I'm kinda proud of myself. Okay, let's jump off here into the bed. Oh, you know what? No, 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 no. Mama always told me not to jump on the bed. And I live by that rule every day. By day 20, we might be a fifth of the way done with our 100 day playthrough, but this house is already 100% perfect. Now, with all the planners in place, I just need to fill them with some flowers. So, I spend the entire first day of summer running around, picking flowers, skipping through the meadows. But <clears throat> it was super manly about it. You don't know, you weren't there. Yeah, and then these pink flowers, super manly. I started running back to my house, but I have to admit, I kind of had a weird experience here. As I was running back to my house, it dawned on me. This house is sick. One of the best I've ever built and living in it the next 80 days is gonna be awesome. Day 21, and I started to get all the flowers set up. Now, now, now. I know exactly what you're thinking. Captain's gonna fall for sure. But here's the thing, I, I totally did. But I got shot by a skeleton this time, it's not my fault, give me a break. I did manage to get most of the flowers set up though, and now it's just the first floor that needs a little bit of love. From the inside of the house though, looking out the windows, the view already looks pretty beautiful with all the flowers. 
Oh, except for this giant hole that we still have. Ah, huh, look at this. I have a shovel in my hotbar and I'm not using it to dig this dirt. I know that's really going to annoy a lot of you viewers. I think that's why I do it. But after that painful performance, I get a big chunk of the patio set up and I'm looking pretty good. Throw down some logs every once in a while so that I can set up some torches on top of them. And the perimeter of this mansion is almost set up. Now, to finish up the wraparound patio, I'm going to bust out something pretty special. I want to make a fence around the patio. But I have a great mod called Mr. Crayfish's Furniture Mod. My loyal viewers already know all about it. But in case you don't, it lets me build a beautiful upgraded fence. And I gotta say, it looks really good. This is one of my favorite blocks right now. It fits in really well in a ton of really good builds. And right now, we're gonna use it to wrap around the entire house. It's really the cherry on top of everything, I think. It just brings everything together. I even left myself a little patch of dirt here so that I can grow some crops just outside my window. Speaking of, we are finally going to get to use some of those Harvest Craft crops. Because now, we're going to plant some flax out front in the... Uh, oh. Oh, it's summer already. Oh, I can't plant spring crops? I mean, I mean I'm, obviously, um, I'm clearly just doing this to demonstrate the fact that I, I wanted you guys to realize I couldn't plant summer... Okay, let's just be real. I clearly didn't know it was summer already. This is actually a pretty big deal though. I missed an entire season building my house. I kind of have no way of getting any of the spring exclusive crops. And this is bad because there are a ton of spring crops that are really useful for a ton of recipes. It's a massive problem for me, but I'm gonna have to work on this problem a little bit later as a creeper blew up my storage and really kicked me while I was down here. I grab up all my loot before any of it despawns. Even with this massive, beautiful mansion, it's all kind of bittersweet. Because now, I know that I've spent an entire season building it instead of growing crops. So, on day 24, I absolutely make sure I'm not going to be making that mistake again. I ran all my loot into my house last night, which I probably should have been doing like days ago, but moving on. I spend the morning adding torches anywhere and everywhere I can, and I'm looking all over the build to make sure that no mobs can pop up behind me again. All the way from this imposing, massive front entrance to the very clean and crisp looking backside of the house. And of course, this super unique two and a half story glass wall that shows off the entire inside of the house. Hmm. Speaking of inside, I celebrate finally finishing my new home by stripping down all these poor innocent sheep while well, the goose menacingly watches me. But I promise, I have a good reason for doing this. Day 25, and I start running around collecting flowers, this time for dye. I'm gonna be doing a lot of dying. I mean, dying, dying wool a lot. I hope I'm not gonna be dying. I mean, well, judging by my jumping skills there. Anyway, what I do know is that I really love those retro old sick 70s conversation pits. They used to be in like every living room ever. Whatever happened to those? I don't even really see those on like Mad Men anymore. Seriously, what did like happen to those? Like logistically, did they fill in the pits with concrete? Seems like such a weird thing to do. They just disappeared from like every house. I'm sorry, am I rambling? What are we, what are we doing? Oh right, we're just going around and harassing innocent sheep all day. Honestly, pretty well spent day. Now we have enough wool to make those big chairs and fill up the conversation pit. I even have enough extra wool to make a extra little room over here, but I'll get to this one soon. And yes, all of these massive sofa looking chairs are part of Mr. Crayfish. I, I, I can't recommend this mod enough. If you're into decorating, easy, gotta have this. This is the core component of the best companion mod to Harvest Craft. And yes, it does cost two diamonds, but it's worth it. It's a cooking table. It's the central block for the mod Cooking for Blockheads, the best mod for making working kitchens that organize and automate cooking. It's pretty much 100% necessary for Harvest Craft fans. So now it's time to install our kitchen. Like I said, cooking table dead center here in the middle, and then we're gonna place the cabinets all around it. The cooking table can use anything being stored in these cabinets and also this fridge too. Oh, and a uh, quick disclaimer, no squids were harmed in the making of this video. Except for this one. 
And with that black dye, we can make black stained glass, which you need to make an oven. Hey, no, I didn't make the mod. I just blindly carry out its gruesome orders. We then add these hanging cabinets, which are more storage, and yes, they still do connect to the cooking table. And finally, we add a kitchen sink, which works as an infinity water source in just one block, which is pretty perfect. We also go around the entire house, adding some wooden chairs that have absolutely no cushions because we need somewhere for all of our house guests to stay. What, the sofas are all for me. We then start day 30 by making some end tables all around the house, and we make some decent sitting areas. Then, I decide that I should add a nightstand, but, oh, hmm. If I try to put this here, it will block one of the doorways. Hmm. Now I could just make my bed a single, but then people might think I don't have a Minecraft girlfriend, so well, that's no good. Okay, I'll just rearrange the entire room instead. All joking aside here, this actually did work out a little bit later. For now, I'm just going to add this big coffee table down in the convo pit. And yeah, I gotta say, things are coming together pretty quick. I'm going to start and add some flower pots too. Then, I'm going to start running around adding some flowers to all the flower pots. We're going to add a little bit of color because I think it looks good. And a little color never hurt anybody. Unless you're colorblind. Then it will blind you. Is that how colorblindness works? Day 31, and I'm adding a little island here in the middle of the room to sort of close off the kitchen. Is this technically an island? Whatever, it's my house, I'm calling it an island. Next, I'm just sitting here, mining some obsidian. Don't ask me why I'm showing you guys this, this is literally the most boring part of Minecraft, so... Hello? Now, if you guys are loyal viewers, you probably already know, I don't think that the Nether and Hardcore mix at all, but I'm only going to be here for a little bit. I'm going to pop my way up to the roof, and grab some of this juicy glowstone. I can't be lighting a house up this beautiful with just plain old torches after all. Day 32, and we use the glowstone and some extra obsidian with all that wool and make some lamps. Not only are these great, pretty cozy looking, but they give more brightness than torches for the sake of mobs. But seriously, I don't really care about that. I just love the look of these lamps, making this whole cabin look right and bright and tight I don't know about that last one, but still pretty good. Also, I decide I want to do something better than just having this weird bonus room back here. I tore out some of the floor in a similar way to how I tear up the dance floor, and then I add some classic brick. I work my way up the windows, to the walls, to the brick drips down my house, forming a beautiful chimney and fireplace to keep me warm in the middle of the lonely winter nights. Also, since I have so many bricks, I do use some of them to make all of my cooking utensils, a big part of harvest craft, which is needed to make yummies for my tummies, as all cooking utensils traditionally do. I then try out my cooking table and get some water, Ooh, whoa, a lot of water, then salt, a lot of salt, more salt than a Fortnite lobby. Add all that to a little bit of flour, which we get from wheat, and we get our first dough, and we can make some bread. Yeah, I know, I know. Kind of boring that we're playing Harvest Craft. I'm just making vanilla old bread. But we'll work on the fancy stuff soon. Just wait. For now, I'm going to spend an entire day down in the mines so I can get enough mats for this. A big screen TV. Now I can watch the captain's TV on TV in any room of my house, which would make it even easier to like and subscribe and press the bell icon. So dumb. Then, it's off to do some more frolicking in the flower fields. And soon, the inside of this house looks just as good as the outside of the house. Which is saying something. Almost as good looking as me. Man, I'm being really vain in this video. Day 34, now we really need to work on finishing up the chimney. Because with all the smoke, I keep hotboxing my own bedroom. In the process of making bricks outside, I find this stinky buddy. And I decide... I shouldn't just keep this big, beautiful house all to myself. So I trick, <clears throat> I mean, uh, kindly invite this big stinky into my house. And I trap him in this boat. I mean, I mean, I mean, I set him up with some amazing accommodations. And then after that, I immediately hear that thunder roaring outside, getting louder, not ominous at all. Then finally, I set some netherrack up in the chimney so that it will always be smoking and crackling. Yeah. Pretty cool, I know, thanks. I spend the rest of the day looking over the entire house, both inside and outside, just taking a little tour. 
and I could keep working on it forever if I'm being honest. But let's be real. It's day 34, and we haven't grown a single crop. That means on day 35, it is finally time to get started with Pam's Harvest Craft. First, we need to collect a solid variety of crops. If you're a loyal viewer, you already know. And in case you don't, you can find crops in these bushes, also called gardens. Of course, it's summer, so we're trying to focus on getting summer crops. But at this point, I'll take whatever I can get. I'm gonna go ahead and level out some land over here on this side of our house. I think this is a pretty good open area. It should be perfect for my unhealthy obsession with Pam's Harvest Craft. I'm gonna add some dark oak log borders around each farm, cause, you know, I'm fancy. And finally, by that night, we don't get any crops planted. Okay, okay, seriously though, on day 36, I finally, finally get some crops in the ground. And almost on cue, the sun finally pops out of the clouds for the very first time to help the fresh plants grow. And grow they will. Now the amount of crops that you want to grow depends on the type of crop, but in general, you don't need to go too overboard like you do when you're planting vanilla crops. I'm going to try to make each plot eight to nine crops, which should quickly make us a ton of a bunch of ingredients for some really good recipes. Now I'm for sure throwing down all of the summer crops I've found, but I'm also really more focusing on crops that will also grow in the fall, like onions and corn. There are some summer crops only that are good too, like lettuce and chili peppers. We get some mustard seeds and some peanuts. I could go on and on. I think there's a total of 83 crops in this mod. There's 129 if you count all the fruits that grow in trees. By the end of the day, we have a good start on a solid crop sample going on. Hopefully, we'll have a decent yield here before autumn. But we still have a ton more crop types to add into the mix. So we're gonna add another terrace above this one and add another farm. And also, I'm gonna add a path. It's not part of Harvest Craft, but I just thought it looked nice. Before the day finally does end, we grab some more crops, fill in all the spots at the bottom farm, and then get started on the top farm. Nah, <laughs> JK, I'm headed to bed. You thought I was actually gonna be efficient with my time? Oh, come on now, you know better. And, oh, oh, okay. I guess that's what I get for being a jerk to my loyal viewers. And you know what? Yeah, that's fair. After spending about half a day adding some upgraded fences that I gotta admit I'm a little bit too much in love with, we then get started on getting some new crops from a new type of garden. These gardens are called shaded gardens and they grow in forests. Some of the bad boys that come in this garden are crops like spice leaves, beans, tomatoes, and maybe my favorite, the sweet potato. Oh, and how could I forget that? Oh. Oh, I guess that's all I got. Huh. Well, luckily, finding gardens in Pam's Harvest Craft is pretty easy, so we should be able to run around and find some. And find some we do. Now, I don't need too many new crops. I don't want to get too greedy here. I just want to fill in the farm and all the spots with the crops that we already have. Which I did. Then, I decide it's time to get greedy after all, so we run out to the swamp, which has soggy gardens, and we get a bunch of new, new crops. So I spend all day and all night running through the swamp and load up on said crops. Then, we head to bed, because there's no point farming at night and tempting more creepers. So early on day 38, we get the new, new crops in the ground, starting with blueberries, which adds a little bit of color, and then a little cotton, which adds, well, absolutely no color. And soon, we've run out of room in the new farm, and you guessed it, it's time for a third farm. So then, we get a great start on that third farm with some rice. Nice. Then seaweed, which is weird, but okay. Then some okra, nice. Then some green grapes. Finally, we then throw down some mulberries um, and water chestnuts. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, this farm is kind of a weird one, really hit or miss with these crops. But hey, more the better. Finally, I'm going to head up to the attic and try to keep a little bit organized here. I'm going to set crops that I already have growing down on the farms so that I don't accidentally replant the same crop twice. I'm keeping a stack of nine so that I can replant next year. And with the surplus over nine, we head to the kitchen and we see what yum yums we can cook up. Oh, what I see, I actually had some radishes too. So there's that. And then on day 39, I decide that I like what I got going so far and I want to double down. I make a nature compass, which is a compass that helps you find the closest biomes that you search, which 
Seems like it should be called a biome compass, but nobody asked me. And so we search up a desert, which is where our next garden will be. Uh, 1,200 blocks away. Great. What's even worse than that is that on the way there, I have to go through ugh, a birch forest. Gross. I even try to walk around the birch forest, but nope. My life sucks, and we're headed right through this unloved forest. But it's not all bad, because I do find this frost garden, which usually spawns in the mountains. And it does give us crops. Not much, but still nice. I then see on our compass that we're getting pretty close, but I think I might have to cross this ocean. I'm so mad about it, I decide to invite this sheep to heaven and make a boat to cross the sea. I then throw down a bed so I can sleep as soon as we make it across. Oh, look at that sunset. So romantic. In the morning, I look back and see I was only a few inches from falling into that sand ravine, and I peed myself a little bit. I spent the rest of the day running around in the desert in the middle of the summer, grabbing all the cactus I could. Yep. Seriously, I spend the whole day on vacation in the desert, collecting cactus, desert crops, and just kind of getting a tan. I spend another romantic night on the beach, and the next day, we jump in a boat and we start taking our long journey home. And good news, we find a few more frost gardens and we get some more exotic crops. And bad news, more icky birch. And I start to question if this is really worth it after all. But I do eventually find my way back home and rush to set up some cactus and sugarcane. But Captain, why the obsession with cactus? Shh, I'll get there. Early on day 42, we get started on expanding the farms with all of our new crops. I guess this would make them the new, new, new crops? Anyway, after looking over all of my crops in the inventory, I realized two things. Number one, after spending all that time getting those crops, I only got like one or two good summer crops. And number two is that autumn is coming soon. So we're going to need to add another farm or two for autumn crops. So I plant all my summer crops, but I still want to jump in and start on those autumn farms. Now I do make sure that I keep a good storage of some extra crops because those are going to come in handy for our next project. In fact, if I hurry up right here, they might come in handy really quickly. If you're a loyal viewer and you see me cooking up this cactus, you probably already know what I'm getting up to, but for now, I'm just glad to have a good chunk of summer crops in the ground just in time. On day 43, I get myself a market up and running, just in case I missed any crops, but I mean, I'm the captain here. I'm sure I haven't missed a single crop. Mm, oh, well, okay. I uh, I guess I did miss kiwis, okay. Oh, and candle berries, but I mean, what, what do you, is, oh, and yes, I, I definitely missed the giant pickle. Okay, I admit it by the, okay, I, I admit it. By the end of the day, I legit spent all 12 of my emeralds, so yeah, I was missing some crops, that's fair. I honestly keep forgetting just how many crops there are in this mod pack. I was up in a tree when I noticed that the leaves are starting to turn colors. This means we're in late summer already. So I need to hurry and get the new seeds in the ground, especially the summer ones. I even work hard all through the night, but I gotta be honest here, I've been kind of doing the math and I don't actually think I'll have enough time to fill out these farms when autumn comes. Day 44, and now I think it's time to go for plan B. The Spark Notes version of our plan is that we're going to need to go mining. And if I'm really going to start a good mining session, I'll need some food. And I mean, we are playing Harvest Craft, so let's see what we can get. Raisins, okay. Popcorn. Ooh, rice cakes, that's pretty good. But let's see if we can do a little bit better. The veggie strips are pretty filling, and they can be made out of just any random veggies. So they're easy to get, and they're perfect for the mid-game Harvest Craft. So now we can head down to the mines and diggy, diggy, diggy. Now the big thing we want down here is lapis. You know, that stuff that just fell into the lava immediately? Cool. But I do find some diamonds, so I'm not gonna cry about it. Too much. Even better, I find this guy down here who buys bones and he can get me some more emeralds so that I can buy some more crops. But even better, better, we find this mob spawner right next to him and it's a skeleton spawner. I throw some water in the back corner here and make a simple primitive mob farm. And after a day of farming bones here, we sell all of our bones for some big stonks 
and we win the game of capitalism. Plus, one extra perk is that this entire setup is actually pretty close to the base. Finally, I'm getting a few good things going my way. I'm headed to bed happy. And the summer will be ending soon. We need to think up another way of getting crops. We take the cactus that we've been cooking up and combine it with lapis that we've been mining. And we make cyan dye. So it begins. But first, I'm literally starving. Let's make some popcorn and stuffed bell peppers. And, ah, why not? Some raisins too. But I do want to keep it nice and murkin, so I make myself some donuts to balance it all out. Now that I have a healthy dinner of popcorn, I can head to bed and assumably watch a movie with a rock in it. Like I said, truly American. Day 47, and I see outside that it's still summer, but only for a few days. So I run into the nether because I want my summer to end nice and spicy, uh, but also I'm really here to farm blaze rods. And after I grab enough, I run back home with my buns thoroughly toasty. So now on day 48, I craft up a brewing stand with those blaze rods, and I start brewing some moonshine. Oh, nope, apparently that's not in Harvest Craft. Okay, well, I guess I'll get the ingredients for some potion of weakness instead. Sugar, easy for a farmer like me. Then some mushrooms, the dark oak forest has its cover there. Then I guess I just had like a spider eye in my pocket. Kind of weird, but okay. So now we can start distilling our rum. I mean, making a potion. If Mojang asks, it's a potion for sure. We then get some gold cooking and harvest a few apples and then spend the night on the farm just making everything nice. So finally, we have our potions. I decide to have a cheers with my roommate before heading to bed. I then cook up a golden apple and get our house guest ready to come back to the land of the living. The next day, I see that we have some real progress in our farm. And with this, we get our first real big harvest at the end of summer. And it feels pretty good, honestly, to have an inventory full of food. The summer worked out pretty well for us, and this is a huge stress out of my mind. And on top of all that, I see that our good buddy is feeling a lot better. So I jump in a boat, and I immediately run him outside to try to take a screenshot. I'm trying to post this to TikTok. My friend says that if I do that, his girlfriend will know that he isn't at home like he told her, and so he runs away. Then, I notice what's more important is the changing color of those trees behind me. So, we start off our autumn with this dude staring directly into the sun. Don't hurt yourself, buddy, okay? And of course, we're gonna jump right into the big project of this season, the greenhouse. And right in front of this massive window. See? Told you I planned it all out. I was feeling great until the rain and thunder started up again. But we got like 10 days of sun. Now I'm sad again. Speaking of sad, we only got like two days of our friend not being a zombie here. Yeah, you're doing real great, Captain. Man, this guy is a horrible backseat driver. He keeps kicking my seat. I'm about to yeet this guy back into the streets, but we do manage to get him in here and sitting down next to the fire. Now it's really starting to get cold at night this time of the year and I'd love to go to bed. But yeah, I forgot he now counts as a monster. So we need to stay up and try to get him sober. In the meantime, since we can't go to sleep, we might as well stay out in the cold working on the greenhouse. So of course, on day 51, we run outside and see a ton of creepers left over from last night. Luckily, they don't do any damage to the greenhouse as they pop. I then craft up a doorway, which turns out to be a super thick H, but it's kind of weird. Yeah, no more of this. I then get to work on making this whole place eight blocks high. That's a super important number, eight blocks. Day 52, and we live out Anakin's worst nightmare as we get ready to get all this glass going. Seriously, I just sucked out all the sand from this hole. Like a sandy vacuum. Back at home, we throw down a few more furnaces so we can really get this glass going. I'm not going to make the same mistakes I have the last two seasons. I'm going to be ready for this one. I need my spring crops, and I need them now. And with what we got so far, we start making our very first greenhouse glass. It takes four cyan dye, which is two lapis and two cactus. Not cheap. But by the end of that night, we do get a total of 30. 
Okay, so, good start. I get up the top, and I start placing all of the blocks over the spots where we're going to have a farm. You can grow any crop within at least eight blocks underneath a greenhouse glass block, and it doesn't matter what season it is, it will grow. Spring, summer, autumn, and keep growing all the way through our winter. It's pretty great, but unfortunately we do run out of this super expensive glass. I need to head back down into the mines, grab some lappy. Seriously, like I'm mining all day. But I mean, come on, it, it is lapis, so here we are. Finally, that night, I pop out. And by the way, down in the comments, quick question. When you guys go mining, do you just pop up in a new spot wherever you end? Or do you go all the way back and find the place where you originally came in? Just curious. Day 55, I see that we're out of glass and we're out of cactus and I'm out of happiness. And what's the number one cure for sadness? It's popcorn, of course. So now I run out to grab all the cactus I've been growing and I even have a little bit of glass in the furnaces, so things are looking up. And, and, we even have some blue cave roots, which we can make into dye and get us even more greenhouse glass. Let's go. In the end, we managed to get a total of 46 greenhouse glass blocks. And even with my little mistakes here and there, now I still managed to cover the entire greenhouse. Just barely. And even though it does end up looking a little bit clumsy, it still looks cool. Now it's time to fill the whole house. The trick here is that even if there's dirt in between the greenhouse glass and the very bottom level of dirt, as long as it's within eight blocks, the greenhouse glass still works. So with that, we can fill the greenhouse with four alternating levels of dirt. Now I can't fit in the one block gap, so I'm still gonna need to make rows in the greenhouse where I can walk by and still get close enough to the crops to be able to harvest them. And then. To make the gaps work, I put these super thin trap doors, or else I'd need to work with like ladders or something else to make sure I can walk in between. I work on getting trap doors, and I use dark oak so that we can see through them. Pretty. Also, I add some glowstone under the water to add some light. Even more pretty. What's not so pretty is all these greenhouse blocks I botched and misplaced while I was building this. So now, we're gonna have to try to get some silk touch on our picks because I just can't bring myself to break these super expensive blocks. And yes, it took the rest of day 57 to get all the mats for the enchantment table. But let's be real, you don't want to see me running around killing a bunch of animals. You want to see this amazing farmhouse while the leaves in the background turn a deep crimson red. And on day 58, I'm getting really tired of looking at my messed up greenhouse, so I'm going to try extra hard to get this silk touch going, which takes some desperate measures. No, no, I could never. Oops, my axe slipped. Oh, jeez, God, that was so sad. Oh, poor ponies. Well, I can't just let the leather go to waste, can I? While running around and looking for more animals to uh, warn about this crazy axe, and the snow is starting to creep farther down the valley towards my house. And I gotta be honest, the seasons in Minecraft, they look pretty good. I really need to hurry up here before winter hits. Oh, no, watch out, the axe is going loose again. It. Ooh, this is actually, okay, all jokes aside, this is actually pretty sad. That sound of a baby horse dying, ooh, that's gonna be in my nightmares. Yeah, that actually does feel pretty bad, I'm not gonna lie. I was feeling so bad that I had to go hide away up in the attic in shame. But the next morning, I realized nothing makes you feel better than eating. Nothing like forcing down all your guilt with a little bit of carbs. But after looking over my options, I do decide it's time to go a little bit healthier and make a roasted vegetable medley. Then I make some shame bookshelves with all those poor horses. And finally, get the outside of my greenhouse fully covered in glass. Obviously, I'm not gonna use greenhouse glass on the outside because it's just way too expensive, but I do really like the look. Eventually, I am gonna add a roof to the greenhouse, but for right now, I'm too busy washing all the blood off my hands. In the night, I make sure I have the lines all set up so that I can easily access all the food. And this is important, because tomorrow, we're going to be putting all of the crops in. First, we need to get ladders so that I can move up the levels because we've got no room to waste on stairs. Then, we start to work on all the crops. In the greenhouse, I'm only going to make four crops per batch because the space is so tight. And even with four levels, 
I need to be as efficient as I can. Also, I'm gonna make an extra effort to stay a little bit organized here as I go on. And so to help with that, the most basic rule is that we're gonna to try to make each level of the greenhouse go by season. First, we're doing autumn, since we haven't got any of these yet. Also, to help keep organized, I'm gonna make a chest in the attic that I'll only put crops that I have already in the greenhouse. This way, I know what we do and don't have planted in the greenhouse just by checking this chest. The second chest is for anything that I haven't yet added to the greenhouse, and instead I should try to put in the big farms outside. Also, when I have less essential crops like artichokes, no hate on artichokes, by the way, I'll just put those in smaller plots of like two. But with super important crops like potatoes, those will have four spots. And yeah, water chestnuts, definitely a two slot crop for sure. Finally, we're gonna throw on a roof to keep all the snow out before the winter hits. We just need to get back on focusing on getting silk touch so that we can move on that greenhouse glass. And I still can't get any silk touch. Okay, back to being sad, I guess. Okay, well, I know I can make myself feel a little bit better by going out and doing some work on the farm, which reminds me, I still haven't harvested the summer crops yet. So that's a little embarrassing, but I can make up for it by running up and throwing up some spring crops so that I'll have a little bit of every crop going by spring. Did I just say I was gonna throw up? I need to choose my words better. Anyway, day 62, and we're finally doing the top level of the greenhouse with all of the spring crops. And, man, I can't wait for Silk Touch anymore. Oh, oh man, that hurts my heart in real life to do. Yeah, I feel bad, but I had to be done though. I take a quick little break and I go through my GUI to make sure that I have all of Pam's harvest crafts. And I do, kind of, Mo the important ones. So, day 63, and I'm feeling much better. Finally, I've planted the last of the unplanted crops and now my greenhouse, my favorite thing in Harvest Craft, which is my favorite mod, is done. Full and so beautiful. So to celebrate, we have a little fiesta and we make some tortillas. And yes, a little more popcorn too. The autumn has me rolling corn and I got no problem with that at all. Day 64, and now we're gonna add some beauty to my highlight building and try to finish the decorative frame glass roof. So we do get to add a little bit of the frame glass, but it costs a lot of iron as well as glass. But I do think it's worth the look. I mean, like what? What's the alternative? Not like we're gonna put a wooden roof on a greenhouse. You guys know we're better than that. Okay, so we do need a little bit of sand. Anakin, hold your breath. And on the way, I find these cool wolves with broken textures. Oh, and now they've broken my face all the way down to one heart, so fun. I then take my anger out on some more horses. Man, I, I really like taking my anger out on innocent things. You know what, guys? I feel kind of bad. I think I'm going to spare this baby horse. Hey, I can't leave any orphans. And my reward for that borderline war crime is on the way home, I find a batch of tropical gardens. In the same way that arid gardens from the desert only have a few crops, a tropical garden is limited, but it's still going to help us in our goal of getting every single crop, including this beautiful eggplant, the best autumn crop. Yeah, I said it, but also let's kill more horses because I'm kind of addicted to it now. Now let's take this amazing, underrated, beautiful crop, the eggplant, get it in the ground. Oh, and I did check. There's no Baba Ganoushan Harvest Craft, which means I'll never be playing it again. Uninstall. Now, sadly, the summer is over, it means there's gonna be no more sugarcane. We can use it and craft it up into paper for more books, but at this point, I don't even really need Silk Touch. I will, however, gladly take some efficiency in chance on my pick, because you can never go wrong with that. By the way, guys, other than Fortune, obviously, which is your favorite enchant for a pick? Day 67, we get back on the top of the greenhouse and we had a slightly sloping glass roof. And in the meantime, I gotta say, the background looks great, but I do notice some snow coming in down the hills and I don't have too long to wait here. Snow in our greenhouse, it's just not a good look. I do head down inside and I see that this might be the very first greenhouse harvest, which is a good sign. We're finally getting some crops from every single season into the kitchen. And just before the night comes, I bring in some new ingredients, some <clears throat> fresh meats little hint on the building that we'll be working on during the winter. Until then, 
The rest of the night is spent harvesting in the greenhouse because it's finally getting up to speed. And soon we'll have a little bit of every crop in Harvest Craft, which means we'll be ready for a delicious winter. Okay, now I realize that day 69 is coming tomorrow. Uh, no pun, like seriously, I'll admit it. I didn't really get a joke ready for this. Um, seriously, day 69 can't always be funny, okay? This video has been full of dumb gamer jokes for 99 days. Give me a break here. We get some fries, fried that night, and we add it into the fridge. This is the first food I think we've added in a whole season. Then we watch the sunset on day 68. As I quickly scramble to try to figure out a decent day 69 joke and yeah, it never really comes. We get the roof on the greenhouse looking pretty good, but it could use a little bit more dimension. So we do just that. I then take a step back and I get a look at all that glass on top of the greenhouse. I gotta say, it looks perfect. I love it. And I'm happy that the season ends so well. It was a great day. You might even say today was nice. And so we begin our very first day of winter. Grass and the trees are starting to turn a little bit gray with frost and the water is quickly turning to ice. Now this season could be a bit of a challenge but we've prepared pretty well. I think this will be our best season so far. Probably means it'll be a huge failure. And no, I didn't really get too much done today, but that's okay. It was just cool to look around at the whole place and see all the big changes that happened for winter. Can't wait till we get our first snow. All right, now like I very subtly hinted, we're gonna be working on our next big build for this season. This is gonna push Harvest Craft to the next level. I quickly scope out a good place to get started, but I pretty much have known from day one that this spot right here is where we want to put our animal barn. I do get a bit distracted by this beautiful winter wonderland, but eventually I do manage to grab some building mats and I don't get too lost in the cold winter nights. Time to get started. We're gonna tuck this little barn right next to the porch. I'm gonna make the barn very small to contrast my huge house, make sure those animals really know their place. This is the same design of barn I built in my medieval 100 day playthrough, and I really liked it back then. I'll add some small changes, like I'm gonna upgrade the fences, cause everything needs upgraded fences. By the way, that's 100% true. I genuinely believe if we just had more upgraded fences, we could bring about world peace. And then I start to get the very beginning of adding the roof. And I do gotta admit, I hate this part. Roofs are not my thing. And of course, the entire time I'm suffering through this, the goose is just watching me mocking me. Now the next day, we really pick up the pace since we really have a good idea of the layout already set. I'm going to make it a little bit longer than the last time I did it and also about a block higher so that I can jump around a little bit better. Because according to my girlfriend, it can always be bigger and a little bit longer. The Minecraft build, of course. What did you guys think I was talking about? I spend the rest of the day harvesting wood and no, this time I will not cut away to me harvesting wood, promise. Wait, did, did I just do it right then? Ah, shoot. The goose starts to demand that I hurry up and build her barn. It's pretty clear now that she's claimed this as her own, and I just have to deal with that. I keep working on the roof, but I just cannot stand doing this. By the end of the night, I see, oh, yeah, not great. I tough it out through the cold winter night, and I do make the back of this barn look mm, decent. Day 74, and the ground is frozen. The water is all ice, and my breath is really chilly but I'm too numb to feel bad about any of it. I get all the wall supports in place, and I try to ignore the goose, who has fully taken on the role of becoming my foreman at this point. I keep working on the roof, and finally get this done, which looks pretty good, at least for me. I then add a few slabs here and there, so that I can place torches, which will keep those creepers from peeking into my bedroom from the barn roof. I cook up some baked sweet potatoes, and that's good, because I could really use a morale boost right now. That night, we get our first snow, it's really beautiful, and I know it's going to be a full white wonderland in the morning. So, with that fact in mind, I get the barn fully set up, finished, and lit. And in just a few days, no snowy animals for us. Worked out pretty well, I think. I then get started on the inside of the barn, putting up the supports, and I get to work clearing out the floor and, well... I just went from living under a goose dictator to a full-blown civil war, and we're losing. I was forced to run to bed, and I was just hoping that the goose would forgive me by morning. And she didn't. 
The reign of the goose has begun. It's a dark era in the captain's world. I am now a slave and can't even leave the barn. I'm forced to finish it or else I'm scared. Please send help. I then start to add the front door and I definitely do not have a gun pointed at the back of my head. The goose is great and is treating us all very well. Do not come looking for me. At this point, I bravely make a break for it. I mean, I was just <clears throat> looking for building materials, ma'am. Please, please don't hurt me. I'll get you all the seeds that you want. I promise, just don't kill my family. Actually, by feeding the goose, it does kind of seem like I've bought myself a few precious minutes. So I get out and get help. I'm going to grab these sheep and I'm going to sacrifice them. <clears throat> I mean, invite them to our utopia with our supreme leader, Goose. We get back and... Okay, shh. I don't see her. We can just sneak in with no bloodshed. What? Bloodshed? Who said bloodshed? I didn't say bloodshed. Stay here. Don't talk. Don't move. All right, guys. Now it's time to enjoy your last meal. <clears throat> I mean, yum, supper time. Oh, those guys are so dead. The next day, we head out and try to find some cows. They're a little bit bigger. Maybe the goose can't take them on. I hope. By the way, on a quick side note, can we all just take a moment and talk about just how goofy these cows look? I've been playing Minecraft for years. It still gets me every time. Absolutely nothing going on behind those eyes. Nope. Yeah, that's right. We're talking about you. Not good things either, big boy. Now, do you guys want to see something super lucky? Just get one egg and nothing. What? You guys want to see somebody go get lucky? Go watch a different YouTuber. You guys know I never get lucky. We head out that day, and we do finally manage to actually find some pigs. Ooh, a whole lot of pigs. Look, I'll say it. I think pigs are adorable. I know they stink, and they run around covered in mud, but I like them. Don't fall in the pens. They'll eat you. Seriously, Google that. It's crazy. But looking at these goofy little guys all trying to get into the gate, it's pretty obvious. Minecraft pigs are a little less intimidating. So they finally get in. I give them a little snack. And I figure this is probably a good time to grab some food myself. So I grab myself a cranberry smoothie. Hmm. Not sure if I'm in love with that, but there it is. Then we make some dough and I make myself cottage pie, which is a true banger and totally makes up for it. Oh, you hear that? Sounds like the goose has found me. Day 77 and we head back into the cold. I'm pretty full of cottage pie and happy. So you can imagine how pumped up I get when I see this. That's right, pink chickens. Oof, now the whole playthrough is worth it right here. Seriously, this is like the peak of the season. All I have to do is get these little cuties home. Then I feed them, and then I grab their eggs. And, hmm, is that a baby goose? Look at that, I guess we got some new management. But yeah, I think I might like her better if I'm being honest. Also, I take a little time to clear all the snow out of the barn and I just take in that sweet, sweet animal smell. Also, we make a back door, because you know how much I love going in the back door. Oh, everyone in the comments, stop. Also, we store up some of the snow so that we can make smoothies, hopefully better than cranberry. With all of these new crops and all the dough I've cooked up, we're gonna get some really good recipes coming in. It's all starting to come together. Just wait until we really start getting some animal products. In my opinion, that's one of the biggest boosters in Harvest Craft. Just like in real life, if I'm being honest. I decide to sit in my living room and just enjoy my cottage pie. Day 78, we do get another snowstorm. But inside this cozy home, solid greenhouse, and decent animal barn, I gotta say, feeling pretty good. So at this point, I do look at the farm and I see, uh, well, I realize I've actually left all the crops out in the frost this whole time and some of them were even harvestable. Yeah, I do feel a little bit embarrassed about this. I decide it's time to break our fast and finally get some meat into our diets. We make a carpet cover over the fences and then we get a little milk crazy. Unlike in vanilla Minecraft, milk is probably one of the most important things in Harvest Craft. It's not just for getting rid of wither effect. Oh, but I also, well, I do want a cheeseburger, so. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, day 79. This means that we might be losing our winter wonderland very soon. So now that we're so deep into the winter season, I finally get all of the old crops out of the ground. So after a full day of pulling crops in the cold, I run into the greenhouse 
and get a ton of these crops harvested. Now we have a ton of crops from every season and animal products soon to come. Honestly, I just need to work up the courage to actually kill some of my animal friends. Okay, now that I said it out loud, it's pretty sad. And it's gonna make it a whole lot harder to pull off, too. Okay, what if I what if I just kill them really fast? That won't hurt, will it, Maria? Why, why did I name them? Oh, this is gonna make it so much harder. All right, on day 80, I actually wasn't sure if spring was gonna start today or in 10 days. So I get up and I see a ton of snow and ice, and I think I should probably plan for a little more winter. Because of that, I decide to get one more big project on the works. The depths. I head under my staircase and start to hack up the floorboards and completely ruin the market value of my home. I start to dig out a pretty deep basement, which I want to be at least eight blocks deep. And so now that you've heard eight blocks deep, you probably should know exactly what I'm doing. That's right. We're gonna be adding greenhouse glass so that we can make another farm underground. And the reason we're adding yet another farm is because while the greenhouse does make every type of crop that we could hope for, the amount of crops of any one type is still pretty limited. In order to support these animals, we need a ton more wheat than just a few spots in the greenhouse. So with that last bit of cactus, we make some greenhouse glass. We use that greenhouse glass to grow some more cactus for green dye. We can use that green dye to make more greenhouse glass so we can make more cactus. To you guys get the logic here, right? But for now, we've done all we can do. We just have to wait for more cactus to grow. So in the meantime, I'm heading upstairs to make another new recipe and make some cornflake cereal. And I gotta say, this fridge is filling up with new recipes pretty fast. With a stomach full of flakes, we get down in the basement and I really start to carve this whole build out. I'm expanding this underground bunker and I gotta say, this is big nostalgia right here. It's really making me wanna replay my nuclear craft bunker days. We might have a life underground 100 days coming soon. Spoilers. But for right now, I do need to pop my head out on the surface and grab a little more sand. It's kind of weird to see sand and a crab together on the beach, but whatever. Then we put enough greenhouse glass on the roof of the basement. The, the basement roof. Does that sentence even make sense? Anyway, we add more greenhouse glass. Now we can add a bit more cactus, but ugh, this is going to take way too long. I still want to focus most of my time on making my harvest grass recipes, so by the end of day 83, we're headed south for the winter and making one more big trip. Day 84, and out here in the desert, you'd be forgiven for thinking this is a warm summer day. It is a nice break from the cold, and we do spend a day out here grabbing a ton of cactus as we get ready to expand our greenhouse. Then we take a nice warm siesta out here in the sand. Now I do spend a good amount of time out here, but I'm starting to miss my animal friends. So by the end of the day, I finally make it back to our frozen dark oak biome just in time to see these cuties. Though it is getting a little bit crowded in here. Hmm. Now how would we make some room? Hmm. So tempted to slaughter. What God's call? Did I answer? Nah, let's head back to the basement farm. I have enough cactus to make some serious headway here. I then do add some dirt way down here, because remember, the whole idea of this place was to get some wheat going so we could take care of the animals. So yeah, we, we do that. Exactly like I said. I look up and I check to make sure I'm directly underneath the glass, and I pop these seeds into the ground. But the animals aren't the only thing that are going to need some food. Now that we have some animal products, like milk, we should be able to expand our menu with things like cheese. We make an asparagus quiche. It's fancy. Yeah, I'm fancy now. Also, we can make some bacon and eggs. So, not so fancy. But I mean, come on now, bacon and eggs. Day 87, and we head into the barn to feed the animals for the morning. All the while, I have the bacon in my hot bar. A little bit morbid, but I, uh, I would never hurt these cuties. Okay, and cutting this footage out, editing to a few minutes in the future, and oh look, I magically have pork in my inventory. <laughs> How did that get there? I am sure super surprised about this, and it definitely didn't involve killing any pigs. Nope, nah, -uh. definitely not. With a full belly of bacon, I head into the mines for a day of collecting lapis, far from the screams of any pigs. I spend a whole day mining and pop out of the ground right in a wolf's den. After dealing with them, I come out and look at what might be my very last snow. Again, I don't really know when the winter's gonna end, but it's already gone on a lot longer than I thought it would. 
I head home at night, and in the snow, with all these lights, I gotta say, it's giving off these Christmas vibes. I do kind of want to celebrate the season, but I only have 11 days left. After all, this is Pam's Harvest Craft. I should really stay focused. Psych! I head out and get a spruce sapling, which I take home and get ready to put right in the middle of my house. In Minecraft, you don't bring a Christmas tree home. You grow a Christmas tree inside of your house, so big that it never could have gotten there in the first place. I gotta say, that does look pretty cool though. And as the sun sets on Christmas Eve, I decorate the tree with lights, and I even put a diamond tree topper right here. Look, it's the closest thing we could get to a star on top of the tree. And you know what? I like how it's all coming together. And it's spring. And early on day 90, I head out front to see how my Christmas tree looks through the window. Dude, I gotta say, this is looking pretty next level, if I don't say so myself. Even though I gotta admit, this is kind of out of season now, isn't it? Anyway, we only have 10 days left to get that last project fully done. And after staying down here for a whole day, we're really getting this place to look a little bit more like my old nuclear wasteland bunker farm, which is pretty perfect. I keep at it for an entire day, till I almost have all the greenhouse glass in place, with the bottom level of the farm looking pretty good already. I had to mine out a decent area of stone to clear this whole area, because I'm really rushing to get this done in time. And I got to admit, I did kind of lose track of time there. But soon, I get it all opened up and looking great. Then I try to get some more wood and run outside when I see springtime has finally come. Everything is starting to regrow in a deep saturation of green, and it all looks great at sunset. I head out to get a little bit more sand, and just like when we first started this 100 day playthrough back in the early spring, there is still snow covered in the very highest areas. Brings me back. I start to head home, and I see that the ice is all quickly melting too, and turning back into our lake. We have our beautiful lakeside forest view once again. This is why Serene Seasons is so cool. You get to see the whole world change right in front of your eyes. I remember last year, at this time of the year, we didn't have any crops growing. Now, as I head out, I have every spring crop I could want. And, fittingly, it's raining, just like it was at the beginning of the playthrough. It's kind of a little trip down memory lane all over again. So I spend the rest of the day getting all of the spring crops down in the ground to start the season off right. I started as a farmer, I'm gonna end as a farmer. You know, speaking of a whole year passing, I've been doing this whole Minecraft YouTuber thing for almost an entire year now. And I really think I've grown a lot in that time. Yeah, not only as a channel, but also I think I've grown as a person. I've learned a lot about what it means to have a community of really supportive, good people helping me out. And if you guys wanna join the growing community, definitely make sure to check out my Discord channel. I've got a ton of new ideas that I try to post in there as much as I can. Plus I just get to talk to you, which is pretty cool. But for now, I just wanna thank each and every viewer from the bottom of my heart. Whether you're a Patreon supporter or a Twitch sub, a YouTube sub, someone who puts all those likes and all of the love in the comments. Like, seriously, look on any of my videos and look in the comments. It's just ridiculous. It's too much. And even if you're just watching this video, thank you for making my dreams come true this year. And thank you for giving me something to be excited about for next year too. And right on time, we get our basement farm done and start to load it up with wheat so that the animals will be happy too. Looking good, but we still need to keep working on this. For now, let's eat. So I think I'm really gonna start cranking out some good dishes and show you guys what Harvest Craft is really all about. Starting with kale chips and applesauce, good. But also we've got some big ones like beef wellington and beef bimbap. love that stuff. And some cake for dessert. Now, while all this does look delicious, I'm not gonna go ahead and eat all of it right away. We're going to be setting all of these dishes here in the fridge to marvel at our work and everything that it's come to. We're going to be making a ton of cheese, which is a big ingredient in a lot of recipes all by itself. Like potato cheese pangrini, which is just a fancy ravioli, kind of. We also get some cranberry sauce, a cup of coffee, green tea, and Rice Krispie cereal. Hmm. Then we get some more flour and eggs to make batter, another basic component for a ton of foods like blueberry muffins. Even though chocolate muffins are way better, but we also make some chili poppers. What am I opening at Denny's? But we aren't done with the junk food because we also get some corn chips, cheesy poofs, 
and an apple fritter. Let's be honest though, anytime you're cooking with batter, nothing healthy is coming next. Then, I see these creeper cookies, which I gotta say, that's a nice touch. Well done, Pam. Get all these in the fridge, and let's head to bed. But, on day 94, I'm headed right back into the kitchen. Today, we're gonna be working a lot with heavy cream. It's just another reason milk is amazing. With cream, we can make ice cream, duh, and, well, some onion rings, and a little festival bread, too. We make some fudo mako. Don't ask, I'm just making everything I see. Then, we add all of this to our collection in the fridge, and we add in a shot of espresso as well. Finally, we're gonna start working with maybe the most important ingredient in cooking, butter. Corn on the cob, a cheese danish, broccoli with cheese dip, biscuits, cream corn, a cucumber sandwich, even a little bit of guacamole to come full circle here. Man, if I saw this fridge in real life, this would blow my mind. I mean, come on, so good. In fact, it might be time to add on another fridge, maybe two. So, we craft both of those up, then we get back to the kitchen and we throw them down. And wow, this is really starting to look like a professional kitchen. I could open up my own restaurant here. Speaking of restaurant, I continue to expand our menu and we get some pasta dishes. And finally, the biggest dish in Harvest Craft, the Paradise Burger. It's, <laughs> wow, eight shanks of food. Think about that, is, it, is that even practical? Now I'm just showing off. We then start to fill the second fridge with some mozzarella sticks, rice cake, miso paste, mushroom risotto, some naan bread, meatloaf, okra creole, pancakes, and some sweet potato mash. Oh my. We've got some crackers and cheese, shepherd's pie, and a bunch of different types of sausages. Really, a, a bunch of everything. And there's a lot more too. I, I really hope that this shows you guys truly all of the possibilities that come in Harvest Craft. I will admit, at this part, I got a slight case of butcher madness. And, um, look, some of the recipes need meat. I've been vegan for a whole year. Give me a break here. We fill an entire cabinet in the kitchen with animal products, and we get right back to cooking. This will unlock some new dishes like, oh, oh my, breaded pork chop, chicken katsu, Chicken cordon bleu, that stuff has been one of my favorite things since I've been a kid. Chicken pot pie, a classic. And we start to make a ton of condiments, like ketchup and mayo, to go with all of our treats. And then, once again, we start to load up the fridge. Hot dogs, gyozu, green bean casserole, which is fine. We'll save that for somebody else, though. Then we get garlic chicken, fried rice, cornbread, hush puppies, and a good old chicken sandwich. Then, a whole nother inventory of dishes. A meatloaf sandwich, meaty stir fry, a slice of pizza, an omelet. We add potato chips and the popcorn in there. And even some Potatoes O'Brien. There really is just too much in this mod pack. It is packed. I cook all through the night and keep getting new dishes that I've never even heard of before. Spicy mustard pork, steamed peas, cucumber soup, carrot soup, steamed spinach, dried soup, and gravy. Okay. I'll Okay, now that I've said that whole list out loud, I admit I made some of the best dishes first, but still, there's so much more to make. And now we're gonna add some stuffed chili peppers, stuffed bell peppers, of course, and steak and fries. And yes, I'm calling them steak and fries. England, you can keep your chips. We keep going, and honestly, I can barely keep up here. Domper, croissant, braised onions, biscuits and gravy. I told you, this has everything you could think of. We finally make it to the end of the alphabet, start getting dishes like waffles, and wow, zombie jerky. Okay, now it's probably gone a little too far. If you can think of one thing that I haven't made in this mod pack, I challenge you to put it in the comments. There are even some dishes in the fridge that I didn't get to mention too. We had some tomato, herb chicken, zucchini bake, veggie lettuce wraps, zesty zucchini, ooh, stuffed mushrooms, spaghetti, and, oh, I, hmm, I think that might actually be it. Honestly, I can't think of anything else to look for. So, wow. We've been cooking for legit the last 30 minutes, real time. So I guess it's probably a good time to move on to something else. And I do want to make this basement down here look a little bit better than Timmy's first Minecraft basement. I start to add some dark oak supports, which I gotta say, even for a full 100 days of working with dark oak, I still love this wood. I do, however, make one small mistake here. And, whoops. It's like this basement isn't that deep after all. I accidentally break into the front yard and oof, mom's not gonna be happy about that. 
But luckily, this part doesn't need to be dug out too deep. I can just cover it up with some spruce and... Hmm. Hmm, yeah. Good as new. Kinda. Speaking of spruce, I start to dig out all the stone and dirt, and I'm replacing all of the walls of the basement with solid spruce plank walls. I get some rest, which is pretty good. I've been up for like four days in a row digging and cooking and getting all the dark oak supports in place. And yet we still, still have quite a lot of work to do down here. Yikes, better hurry. Well, I do quickly dig out all the stone and put in all the support beams. Finally, I just have to fill in all the walls with spruce. Because remember, it doesn't matter if this is underground, I'm still gonna try to make this all look good, even if it's just for me. After a whole day, I get the last pieces in place and yeah, I gotta say it, I really like it. Now this dark oak forest farmhouse is complete. I take a long look around on day 98 and I just take a minute to look back on everything we've done and I realize I've done everything I could want to. Except for one last thing. We started this place off hoping to do some farming, so it only feels right that we end up doing some farming. I start to add two new plots for the summer crops, even though they'll be a little bit early this year. And as I'm doing my final farming here, I just want to say I'm calling myself out. I know that I do a ton of Harvest Craft content on this channel. I hope you guys love it as much as I do. That being said, now that I've done a full 100 days of Harvest Craft, I think it's time to take a little bit of a break. No more of these full 100 days of doing farming. I'm still always going to play Harvest Craft, but I'm just not going to make it the number one mod in the future. For example, I might go 100 days where I play only underground in a nuclear craft bunker. Sure, I'll still have harvest craft crops in the game, but I'm not going to try to collect them all and make a big farm. I'll be too busy trying to heal the wasteland and survive. Hmm, I don't know if that counts as giving away too many spoilers. Hey, if you've watched this long to the video, you get some extra behind the scenes goodness. I think that's fair. Day 99, and just like on day one, we start and end in a relaxing spring rain. Only this time, I don't think we're gonna have to worry too much about the zombies. I even take one last day to fill the underground farm with some fall crops. Now, I have a greenhouse growing all these little crops that I need, full big farms out front to grow the crops of whatever season it is, and a bonus greenhouse basement to grow any out of season crops, but in bulk. On top of this, I have a beautiful barn filled with happy animals, and of course, one amazing dark oak mansion. Whenever I play Minecraft, this is what I think of. This is what I envision of a relaxing farmer's dream. Truly, this is the best Minecraft has to offer. Thank you so much for watching this and for being a part of the crew too. I hope you guys loved it as much as I did.